Welcome back. And in this episode, we're going to talk about what is a workload domain an introduction to VMware Cloud Foundation. So what is this term called a workload domain? I'm going to assume that you're already familiar with some things as you're probably a vSphere admin. So let's explain it this way. A workload domain is what you already know as a vCenter with ESXi compute cluster. But when it's deployed with VMware Cloud Foundation, a workload domain is deployed with automation. And that automation follows a prescribed architecture. Now, that architecture includes taking a group of ESXi hosts and deploying them with their own vCenter server, installing and configuring software-defined networking, and connecting some storage. Which storage we'll cover in detail in another video. Now, when this is all deployed, from here on out, this workload domain is now managed by the SDDC manager. You can create, expand, contract, delete, and lifecycle manage the entire workload domain, all with automation. Now, when you think about public cloud, and you go to a public cloud website and request more capacity for your infrastructure, this is the same thing. You just now have the power of that cloud control inside your private data center. Let's take a deeper look. Workload domains come in two types. Upon initial creation of VMware Cloud Foundation, we create the first type, the management workload domain. Now this is where almost all the management virtual machines are placed. There is one exception, and that is the NSX Edge network cluster nodes, which will be covered in a future video. But all other management virtual machines, including vCenter server, NSX managers, the RE appliances, and any other third-party management and operations applications you might have to operate your private cloud would be deployed here in the management workload domain. Now, depending on the size of your infrastructure, this single management domain is possibly all you need to run your business applications as well, as you can also deploy business applications and virtual machines inside the management workload domain. This is fully supported, but for our larger enterprise customers, we offer a second type of workload domain, and that's called the VI workload domain, or sometimes called the virtual infrastructure workload domain. This workload domain is purpose-built just for running your applications. And what this gives you is workload separation. This workload separation is fantastic architecture for separating your management applications from your business applications. So that way they don't step on each other and you don't create any of that noisy neighbor situations. This gives workload separation so that your applications for your business can run in that virtual infrastructure workload domain and your management components can all live in the management workload domain, nicely separated from each other. Next, let's go a little further and talk how to scale this up. Now, maybe you have a very large enterprise and you need more workload separation. We can also provide multiple workload domains. As you can see here, each workload domain comes with its own vCenter and its own NSX management plane and storage. These are all separated. Now, you might be thinking, why would this be necessary? Well, here are a few ways that we have seen this use. Workload domains create workload separation by creating boundaries around the management components on the hosts and storage and networks. So in this instance, we can see that you can have an entire workload domain just for the Windows admins. You can let them have their own vCenter server, their NSX management plane, storage, and the ESXi hosts. Then you can also create another workload domain just for the Linux admins and let them have their own vCenter, NSX management plane, and storage. One of the best use cases for this is lifecycle management. Each of these workloads can now be patched and upgraded independent of each other. So the Windows admins can follow their schedule on Patch Tuesday, and the Linux admins can all do their patching and upgrades on their own schedule, completely independent of each other. There are many other reasons to create this vCenter boundary as well. Create one for desktop admins that are leveraging Horizon or Citrix virtual desktops. 
You can create a workload domain for those DMZ applications to help maintain highly secure environment for applications that are accessed over the internet. Each use case maintains high workload separation for complete flexibility. Workload domains can also deploy remote clusters to remote sites. Here, we have a two node remote cluster site leveraging some third party storage. And then below that, we have another remote cluster site using three or more hosts and leveraging vSAN as the backend storage. Now, notice how the management plane remains in the management workload domain site. So the vCenter server and the NSX managers are still in that management workload domain. For these remote sites, we have some specific requirements that require you to have redundant site links, high speed, and low latency. See the latest documentation for the required metrics for remote clusters. VMware Cloud Foundation also has flexibility around how we deploy and use the NSX management plane. As shown here, when you deploy a second workload domain, you have the choice to deploy it with a new NSX management plane, or you can choose an existing NSX management plane and share that NSX management plane across two separate workload domains. This gives you the flexibility to choose how you want to architect the network management plane for your cloud environments. Next, we have several options for our cloud service providers that want to create independent single sign-on workload domains. By default, each workload domain is using the same single sign-on domain, but we have additional options for this as well. Here, we can see we have a choice for single sign-on domain isolation. As you create a workload domain, you can choose to join the existing management single sign-on domain or create a new isolated workload domain. As shown here, we have them mixed with shared and isolated single sign-on domains. And we also support complete single sign-on domain isolation for each workload domain. And this is how most cloud service providers would use this option. So that each workload domain would be completely isolated from a single sign-on domain perspective. Yet, the cloud service provider would be able to maintain control of all scale and lifecycle management operations from the SDC manager. Another deployment option for VMware Cloud Foundation can be used to leverage two sites in an active-active availability. Cloud Foundation also supports stretch cluster deployments between two sites when used with vSAN. Stretch vSAN clusters can be useful for performing planned maintenance on availability zones without any downtime. Applications can be migrated back after the maintenance is complete. Stretching a cluster automatically initiates VM restart and recovery in the case of unplanned failures. VMware Cloud Foundation also can create multiple clusters inside individual workload domains, making scale up a breeze, as we show here with three clusters deployed within one workload domain. As shown in this presentation, VMware Cloud Foundation workload domains contain a lot of possibilities for creating the right architecture for your business needs. Whether you need isolation with single sign-on domains, workload separation with vCenter server, or software-defined networking management plane separation or sharing, the choice is yours on how to architect VMware Cloud Foundation to meet your business application needs. And the automation of VMware Cloud Foundation for each of these choices creates a consistent, repeatable architecture that allows you to create, scale up, scale down, or delete your workload domains and clusters just like you would in the public cloud. But now VMware gives you the power of the cloud in your private data center. Thanks for joining us today. If you want to learn more, visit our website at VMware.com. We'll see you on the next one.